second favorite game show. And now, let's all give a big hand to today's final contestant. Thank you. Thank you very much. He's now going for this week's super grand prize, a mountain of money. Good luck, Mr. Longhorn. Are you ready for the final round? I sure hope so. Now, let's read a little excerpt from the contestant's diary, shall we? No, not that. I can't wait to go on Cry Baby Cry just so that I can be next to the lovely assistant, Eloise. She is one hot babe. <laughs> and that's not all. We found this in the contestant's dressing room. Here you go. A stuffed toy cow. Titty cow! No! <laughs> The embarrassment must be terrible. Is he a crybaby? Well, what do you think, folks? Oh, wait. Look at this. Look at that crybaby cry. Well, that's how it goes here on the show. We'll do anything to make you cry. But if you do, then it's... For you! Now, let's take a look at what our super grand prize will be on next week's show. Imagine beautiful Paris in the spring. Gone kablooey! The glory of Rome crumbled to nothing. Sunny Baja, California, a barren desert. Yes, it's a romantic getaway weekend of world destruction. Some lucky winner will have 48 hours to pillage and plunder everything on Earth. And remember, winners never cry. See you next time. Can you believe that, fat dog? What a rip next week's Super Grand Prize is. Yes, I can believe it, little costume buddy. I can believe anything I see on TV because it's loud and it has pretty colors. It just doesn't make sense. Well, if it wasn't loud and it didn't have pretty colors, it'd just be a big electric box. No, no, no. I mean, what kind of loser would want a weekend of world destruction? A weekend of world destruction? I love it! I've got to have it! But it's just too dangerous. I can't let anyone know that under this handsome, rectangular appearance lies the heart of a really sensitive guy. Perhaps a little too sensitive at times. I've got to find someone who's not a crybaby. Someone who can go on the show instead of me and win me that weekend of world destruction! All right, Sonny. You have to stop your evil plotting long enough to eat your dinner. Mother! I'm trying to work here! <laughs> this little dessert brownie's good. Big superhero faker should be coming out his front door any second now. At last, I'll have him where I want him. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Come on, little costume buddy, let's go already. Ooh, who put that there? Oh well. Ow. 
<laughs> Delicious. I love music. <laughs> I can see that. Now listen here. Are you a crybaby? No way. I never cry. Crying's for, for, for little crying buddies. <laughs> then I think we can come to some sort of an agreement. What do you mean, Dr. Rectangle? You're going to go on Neighborhood X's second most popular game show, Cry Baby Cry. And get this, you're gonna win it for me so that I can get the super grand prize of a weekend of world destruction! What's in it for me? Well, I'll have an entire weekend at my disposal, so I would be perfectly willing to spare you, say, 20 minutes on Saturday morning to destroy whatever you like. 20 minutes? And I can destroy anything or anyone? Yes. You must leave me the prettiest world capitals, any famous monuments that symbolize liberty, national parks, that sort of thing. Hmm, 20 minutes ought to be more than enough time to take care of little rancid butter and his fat dog. It's a deal. Why the long face, Ace? Ah, oh, trash, fat dog. It's just that I can't get over a prize like a week in a world destruction. It should be a week in a saving the world or something. That'd be a real prize. You know, I've been thinking about that. If the prize is destroying the world and it was won by someone who didn't want to use it, ipso fatso, that person would actually be saving the world by winning. <laughs> hey, that's it. You're a genius, fat dog. I'm going to go on that game show and win and not use the prize. But be careful, little costume buddy. Game shows can be very dangerous. I was on a game show once. It was horrible. Horrible. <laughs> What's your point, fat dog? Well, the point is, um, uh, uh, wax. Hmm. Uh, the point. Uh, hey, look. There's this week's contestant from Cry Baby Cry. <laughs> Stop, please. Don't make fun of me. He could have had a mountain of money if he just hadn't cried. Must be awful hard. Well, like I always say, there's no money like no money. What do you mean by that? Uh, I don't know. You know what you're looking at? My official application to be on next week's show. And you'd better be watching next week. Cause I'm gonna be the super grand prize winner. And you're gonna be the super grand destroyed loser. Ha! Ha! I can't let Cray win that show and get a weekend of world destruction. Fat Dog, you gotta help me. All right, kid, why not? Free time is my middle name. I thought it was Isidore. I love it when people ask me what I'm gonna be doing next weekend. Come on, ask me. Just ask me! Ask me! <sighs> what are you doing next weekend? Let me give you a hint. Destroying the world? <laughs> <laughs> My weekend? Oh, nothing. Just destroying the world, that's all. <laughs> that's really funny, Dr. Rectangle. If you're insane, I hope you have some sort of evil plan to make sure I win this show. I do not want to be made to cry on national TV. Oh, Yes! We will surely triumph, for I have something very special up my sleeve. Behold, Teen Robot Guy! Built using the brains of real teenagers and some scrap metal. Apparently, teenagers aren't using their brains. I found several just laying around in my backyard. He is going to be your sparring partner to help you get in shape. Say hello, Teen Robot Guy! Hello. 
You look like a crybaby. But then, all humans do. Now peel the onion, but remember, above all, don't cry. I can do this. This is a piece of cake. Now we're going to move it up a notch with my secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Onion Boy. Scratch, Onion Boy, scratch! <laughs> Take five, Onion Boy. That's all right, kid. Even Babe Ruth missed a few slam dunks every now and then. Onward and upward. You've both been very, very bad boys. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ground the two of you. <laughs> Freddy! What is wrong with you? Can't you take a little mom? I've been taking it for years. And you'll keep on taking it until you move out and get your own place. <laughs> Am I saying the right thing, Sonny? Should I tell him he won't be getting the puppy for Christmas again? <laughs> Fat dog, I can't little take much more of this. Just Hang in there. With this but, but nothing's more embarrassing than bringing your grandfather to school. Exactly. Luckily, he was wearing a diaper. Uh, still is, I think. Kiss her on the cheek! Go on, do it! Do it. I can't. Why are you, chicken? Uh, I just can't. I can't do it! <laughs> what a sweet metallic boy. You're weak, buddy. Weak! I'm beginning to worry about whether you'll be able to win the super grand prize for me. It's not that you're bad, per se. It's just that you're no good! <laughs> My teen robot guy is much better than you. I'll just put him on the show in your place. What? What are you doing? Now beat it! <laughs> hey, that's my shirt! It's like I always say, if you want something done right, you probably have to get a robot to do it for you. Okay, let's try it again. But it makes me feel stupid. Come on! You have to build up a tolerance. <sighs> I'm rich. Woohoo! I'm rich. Woohoo! You're really coming along. You bet I am. Let's go save the world. That's the spirit, little costume buddy. And besides, saving the world is what television-based good family entertainment is all about. <laughs>
No, no, take that corn away. I am far too excited. Soon the world will be mine, and that upsets my stomach. You really think your teen robot guy will be able to beat the world's greatest little costume buddy? <laughs> of course! I made him so he could never cry, and my teen robot guy is perfect. He just has to be told what to do, and he'll do it. I think I need a little more butter. Event number one, the embarrassing barrel run. Why is it embarrassing? Because no one likes to fall into a pit of mud, especially wearing diapers. Some people even cry when they do. There's the signal, go! Slippery. Some of our nation's bravest athletes have come up crying at this point, especially while wearing diapers. Piece of cake. Give me a T! Give me a double E! Give me an N! T Robot Guy! Yeah! I mean, uh, uh, Cardi McPherson! <coughs> I will not cry! Hello, Cruddy. Enjoying watching yourself compete? This is the most outrageous junk I've ever seen in all my life. I have an idea for you. Listen up. Mm, thanks, fat dog. I don't know why you're betraying your little costume buddy, but that's okay by me. <laughs> it's time for event number two. We have a group of very important statesmen from around the globe. Now, you must run naked through a crowd of world leaders. Uh, uh, I can't do that. They're important dignitaries. Exciting second round. I'd like to thank all those world leaders for helping us out today. We'll be right back for our final round after these messages. Okay, contestants, uh, take take five minute break. <laughs> Fat dog, oh, I'm doing pretty good, huh? I, I might even win. Remember, the important thing for a hero isn't winning; it's saving the world. Sometimes those two things aren't the same. You know what to do. I do not need your help, but if it helps me to win, okay. Okay, okay, contestants, in your places. <clears throat> Welcome back, contestants. For our third and final event of the evening, we pulled out all the stuffs. Yes, for a weekend of world destruction, we think it's worth it. You are so finished. You won't be seeing me crying. I've got to save the world. You'll be crossing that rope bridge across a dangerous swamp. But it won't be easy to get there without crying. Thanks to my beautiful assistant Eloise and her famous volleyball cannon with our volleyballs wearing diapers. There's the starting signal. Good luck. Ow! This is it. I can feel it and it feels so good. Don't cry, little guy. You are going down, hate wearing human boy. I can take it if you can. Then take some of this. <laughs> Attention, everyone. He is crying. Look, look at him cry. Wow, that was a lousy thing to do. Way to go, Teen Robot Guy! I mean, uh, cr uh Cruddy! That, who cares? Go, go, go! Hold up there, Eloise! 
<laughs> He's right. This boy is a crybaby. It's not true. He sprayed water on me. Wind. Looks like you're the big winner! Come on down and claim your prize! Way to go there, Team Robot Guy. I just wanted to give you some sound advice. You know, Dr. Rectangle is just using you to win. But you deserve better. It's your prize! You won it. You're worthy of destruction. Think of yourself first. You are right. I will be first. Thank you. Congratulations, Crutty, on being today's Super Grand Prize winner. Thank you. Now that I am the winner, stop using that ugly human name. Call me Teen Robot Guy. Okay, Teen Robot Guy. And it really is a sensational prize today. A weekend of world destruction. 48 hours of outrageous behavior. Where would you like to start? The South Pole? Tibet? London? It is my prize, and I get to do what I want. After all, I did all the work. I am going to start my weekend of world destruction right now, and I am going to start it with me. I deserve it. No! Well, that's the end of that prize. <laughs> Looks like we've got a crybaby right here. <laughs> Well, folks, that's it for this week on Cry Baby Cry. Tune in next week for new and better prizes. And remember, winners never cry. See you next time. Well done, little costume buddy. You stopped Doc Rectangle from winning this week's show. <laughs> but uh, I didn't win. You didn't win the show, but you won the best prize of all. You saved the world. Yeah, I guess that's true. And I'm a big winner, too. All the diapers I can eat. <laughs> oh, fat dog. Woof. Costume buddy, what are you up to? I'm scanning the horizon for evil. Hmm. Anything? Nah, this neighborhood's really lame. 
There's no evil, no crime, nothing. The most excitement is my jerky neighbor, Mr. Johnson, losing a fight with a dandelion. Mm. Hey, this is great. Mr. Johnson's gonna get run over by his own trash can. Now I can save him. What the heck are you doing? What are you, huh? Some little man of action always out to prove yourself? Do you think you're some kind of famous superhero? No, mister. Just doing my job. Your job? You dented my garbage can with your reckless actions. Oh, I should have you arrested for endangerment of my garbages. Who do you think you are, huh? No good, punk kid. You know, Fat Dog, I'm fed up with doing such little heroic deeds where no one's really grateful. I'm capable of so much more. I'm interested in the big time. Ah, uh, the big time ain't so big. Look! Oh, it's Dan the Man Fantastic! Hi, kids. Dan the Man Fantastic here. That was me doing my classic 12-tree jump. That was some stunt. I only broke 32 bones on that one. But I'd like to take a moment to talk about something serious. Trees. You know, wood is no laughing matter. I don't eat wood, and you shouldn't either. A lot of your friends might offer you a twig or a branch or some bark. But be smart and just say no to wood. It's bad for you and for the environment. See? Look at that. Dan the Man Fantastic is famous. Was famous. Whatever, but he used his fame to do good, and that's what I want. I want to get so famous that people have to let me help them. I don't know, kid. A hero shouldn't care about fame. A simple thank you for a job well done should be all the recognition a little costume buddy ever needs. I don't care. I want it. I want fame. Hmm. In that case, I know a famous guy you should talk to. A good friend of mine from the old days. Come on, I know where we can find him. There's nobody famous here. All I see is Doc Rectangle and some old lady. I know they're not famous. He's right in front of you. That guy, he's famous. As famous as Dan the Man Fantastic. Well, that's not true, son. Your pal Fat Dog was once pretty darn famous himself. Remember, Fat Dog? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Brian, those days are long in the past. Little costume buddy, meet Brian Wallace. Brian, my little costume buddy. Pleased to meet you. Yeah, great. Uh, look, I, I was kind of hoping to meet someone famous. <laughs> well, being famous isn't all it's cracked up to be. It's a hard life full of painful sacrifices. No offense, but I'd rather talk to somebody famous. I mean, I bet that it's really wicked, and a famous person has all sorts of power, and people listen, and... Ah, uh, being a famous person is a miserable existence. It changes you. You are no longer yourself. Just take it from me. Sorry, mister, but I'm not falling for all these fuddy-duddy scare tactics. Whoa! You? You're Dan the Man Fantastic? Dan the Man Fantastic is here? Come on, we'll, we'll sneak out my usual way. I'll take you guys to my stunt ranch. Wicked! It's totally private. Oh, watch out for that! Ah! Oh, huh. 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 Uh, guys, I'll meet you there, okay? Uh, uh, oh. ah. Wow! It's Dan the Man Fantastic's trademark orange Cadillac, Bessie. She looks, uh, like you've gotten a lot out of her. Sure have. Ah! 
Wallace's Stunt Ranch. You know, I'll tell you, kid, I just got too famous and decided it was time to hang up the old crash helmet. And so I started this stunt school where I teach others to be daredevils. Hmm. How many students do you have? Well, none, actually. You see, nobody wants to learn stunts from some guy named Brian Wallace. Why don't you call it Dan the Man Fantastic's Daredevil School? Hmm. Never thought of it. He's a great daredevil. But you know, being fearless and being dumb usually go hand in hand. Here, let me give you the tour of the facilities. That's the field. That's the trailer. And this is the Dan Danger Memorial Lean To. <laughs> this is where I keep some footage of my greatest daredevil stunts. No way! I'd love to see some. <laughs> you bet. Not only broke 15 ribs that time. Only broke all my legs there. Only broke my nebula and my rubella on that one. Hey, look at me. I'm on a tractor. <laughs> Never thought I'd see the day when I'd actually be on a tractor. Hey, careful, fat dog. That tractor has a real sensitive trigger. No! This thing's out of control! Man, what am I gonna do? Wait, you're Dan the Man Fantastic! Do a daring stunt or something! No, I'm Brian Wallace now. I've hung up my crash helmet for good. Oh, once you save one life, you just can't stop. I'm not ready for that. Well, uh, I've gotta help him! Hang on, fat dog! Filming that. Woohoo! <coughs> I'm gonna be rich! <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme! Fat dog, you're not gonna believe what's happening. Look at this. They said it couldn't be done. They said that there couldn't be anyone more famous than Dan the Man Fantastic. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you of the hottest new stunt king to ever hit the ramp. Hot Dog Mendoza, as his fans call him, executed a perfect jump over a trailer park, several satellite dishes, three pickup trucks, and three old women sunbathing. He's one hot dog. It's amazing, Fat Dog. Your stunt is playing on all the channels. It's even being featured on the world's funniest home, dumbest, stuntastic videos. Hot Dog Mendoza completed this stunt with the help of his costume companion. That's me! 
It seems that the whole world can't get enough of the amazing Stunt Happy Hot Dog Mendoza. We now go live to the home where Hot Dog Mendoza is said to be staying. The whole world is waiting for him to come out. Do you know what this means, Fat Dog? You are famous, world famous! It's not just me, little buddy. We're in this thing together. We're a team, a duet, a pair of triplets. Oh, I couldn't have done that stunt without you. Nothing can break us up. We're going to be famous together. Okay. What, uh, what do we do now? Now we let ourselves be happily coddled in the smothering embrace of fame and fortune. <laughs> Come on, let's go face our adoring fans. Kiss my baby, hot dog. Kiss my baby. Pleasure to be here on the Stuntomania show. <laughs> now remember, don't try this kind of thing at home, kids. Dangerous stunts are best left to the pros, yep. I worked for months and months in the preparation for this stunt. But you didn't Shh, don't sweat it, bud. When you're famous, the truth is the last thing that matters. <laughs> nope, nope, I can't do it for that amount of money. Huggy dog ice cream? Hmm. Tell them I said they gotta double their offer. Wiener dog wieners? Tell them they better triple whatever Hoggy Dog's offering. Fat Dog, we have to talk. Not now, kid. I'm working on some real sweet commercial deals, and I mean sweet. Poochie Chow? Absolutely not. I will not do a Poochie Chow commercial. I don't care how much they're offering. Mendoza does not do dog food. Hey, you're Hot Dog Mendoza's little costume companion. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure, go ahead. So what is Hot Dog Mendoza really like? What doesn't Hot Dog Mendoza like to eat? How did he get so daredevilish? Huh? So, when do you plan to do your first solo stunt? I don't really consider myself a stunt boy. I mean, I help Fat Dog. Uh, you mean Hot Dog? Yeah, whatever. Uh, but I do want to say to the people out there that I'm available to fight bad guys and... Hey, Ted, come on. Let's see if we can go talk to Hot Dog. You know, Fat Dog, all these parties in this fancy hotel living, it's all kind of a waste, don't you think? We really should be doing something with our newfound fame. I am. Okay, Sheila, let her rip. <laughs> Wasn't that something? No, I mean we should be doing something constructive, something good. We should use it to fight crime, uh, help kids or something. Anything but this. More contractual obligations for you to sign, Mr. Mendoza. Oh, hello, little costumed companion. You know Nelson. He's my, I mean, our agent. Yeah, I know him. You know, I believe that it's high time for the old hot dog to go it alone. You don't need little costume, buddy. 79% of 48% of the polls indicate that some of the public is ready for a hot dog Mendoza solo act. You're ditching me? Well, it is with my public wants. I have to listen to my agent. He's got his pulse on the finger of the public. I don't believe this. I thought we were friends. I thought you said it didn't matter what happened out in the world, as long as we stuck together. Bread and butter, that's what you used to call us. And now, and now you're acting like a big fat jerk. Well, friendships are usually the price of fame. So, bye-bye. Uh, Well, 
Now that you've gone solo, the pressure is really on for the world-famous hot dog to do another stunt. Don't you agree? It'll simply be Fabo. Man, this bite's big air. I don't care what Fat Dog does with his fame. I'm gonna use mine to do good. Help! Help! I'm, I'm trapped! Now's my chance! Hurry, Harry! I can't breathe! What's wrong? Oh, heck, I was on my way to see that stunt god Hot Dog Mendoza. He's performing a new stunt. And dang it all the heck if I didn't go and lock my keys and my girlfriend inside the car. Let me help. I'm a budding superhero. Heck, this situation calls for a famous stunt guy like Hot Dog or even his little cape companion. But that's me. I'm the famous little caped companion. No way, Tumbleweed. You're not him. Besides, you're a little short for a famous superhero stunt guy, ain't you, boy? Now stand clear and let Texas Harry Longhorn do his thing. This kind of thing takes real guts. Uh, oh, thank goodness. I was so scared. So very scared. What a waste. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most anticipated moment of the decade. Hot Dog Mendoza will now perform a death-defying feat of such cunning and balance and bravery that it will shock you to the very cockles of your socks. This had better be good. Piece of cake. <laughs> That's my boy! I discovered him, you know. What? Not ready yet? Look, we were lucky just to get this Diet Poochie Chow commercial, especially after the fiasco of your last stunt. Don't blow this for us. Now remember, you have to eat a huge amount of Diet Poochie Chow, but still remain slim enough to be shot out of the trademark Diet Poochie Chow cannon on a national talk show. Are you listening to me? Now, give me a big thumbs up. Hmm, hot dog, huh? Okay, now this is the final run-through before taping. Sit up. Sit up and beg. Now, roll over. Now speak. Bark. Bark. Brilliant. You're ready. Hello? Hello? Who is this? Diet. Dog. Food. Who are you calling? Hang up the phone this instant. I thought I told Fat you. Fat dog? Hello? Hello? Fat dog? I do that I have to remind you that you are simply too broken in death because of your rich and famous lifestyle to walk away from this fantabulous gig. Now get back to work. Oh, man. Fat Dog must really be in trouble if he's been reduced to diet. Oh, I gotta save him. And I know just the guy that can help me. Set, ready to air. <laughs> and action. Hold everything. <laughs> I'm back, baby. Let Dan the man fantastic eat that poochie chow. Poochie Chow gives me the strength I need to take unnecessary risks. Take it from Dan the Man Fantastic. Dan, are you sure you want to do this? I mean, what about Brian Wallace? What about all that stuff you said about how bad fame is? Well, I guess I was just born to be a star, kid. You know, Fat Dog, I guess fame is just better left to the famous. Huh? Fat Dog, you big loser! My grandma's girdle's more famous than you! Uh, 
thanks. Uh, I guess you saved my life. Do I owe you or, or something? Not at all. It was not only my duty as a superhero, but it was also my pleasure. Little costume buddy. I just wanted you to know that I became a famous jerk, not for the women and who the parties and the obscene amounts of cash. I became a famous jerk to help you learn an important lesson about fame. Yeah, right, fat dog. Pretty weak. Oh, really? Whatever. In three, two, one. This is Shanks O'Malley reporting to you from this small, quiet community near the middle of Neighborhood X. It seems an ordinary place, but it is a town with a dark secret. Today, I will expose its dark, brown, furry, mangy, tick-laden, sweaty, stinky underbelly. A terrible crime has been committed. A truck full of food destined for the annual Neighborhood X picnic never made it to its final destination. It was hijacked by a large brown blur. The whole town is in a rage, not to mention hungry. My name is Shanks O'Malley. Tonight, on 20 Minutes, I'm on the trail of a heinous crime, and I want justice. The truck itself refused to cooperate, remaining silent during our interview, so we interviewed the driver instead. Because he lives at 22 Elm Street, this man does not want to appear on camera for fear of reprisals, but he did say that the suspect was a big, fat dude, which narrows it down. And we received this anonymous phone call only moments ago. The fat dog did it. The fat dog stole the food. Ha! Fat dog! Ha! <laughs> Although this is most likely a matter for the police, 
It will be I, Shanks O'Malley, who will see to it that Fat Dog Mendoza is exposed and brought to justice. Giovanni, you invited me to dinner. Fat Dog's sense is tingling. Something's wrong. We've heard stories that this fat dog is likely to be found in the company of a young man who lives in this dwelling. Let's have a look, shall we? Uh, hi. Are you acquainted with the criminal, Fat Dog Mendoza? I know the regular Fat Dog, but not the criminal Fat Dog. Where is he? I think he's taking a shower. I look simply a mess. Hmm. There's hair on this loofah. The criminal fat dog Mendoza was here. I'll come back and talk to that nice reporter later. Just look at me. I'm not decent. Say, mister, what the heck is this all about anyway? Your shower-taking pal, Fat Dog, is wanted for a crime so heinous, I dare not speak its name. A crime? I don't know what it is, but I must be guilty of something. I am Fat Dog, after all. I better get out of here. You've got the wrong man. Fat Dog is a great guy. He's my best friend. He even saved my life once. It was a long time ago. We were taking a little nature walk in the woods, when suddenly... <laughs> Lassie, the dumbest dog ever to roll in dirt. Maybe Dumb Lassie can go for help. <laughs> I doubt it. Go get help, boy. Go get help, Dumb Lassie. trapped under that fallen tree, but there was another time that... I've heard enough of this nonsense. Let's go already. Fat Dog's innocent, I tell you. Innocent. Excuse me, good sir. Do you know anything about Fat Dog's diabolical heist of the truckload of food? Diabolical, you say? I like the sound of that. But Fat Dog is of no consequence. Merely a lap dog. <laughs> But seriously, folks, I'm glad you stopped by. A great flood is coming. Provide. Provide! Eh, Mom, <laughs> cut it out, will ya? <clears throat> Once I post the quadrilateral moped, I shall crush the feeble-minded prole... Uh, prole... Ted... Prole... What's this word? <laughs> anyway, beneath the steely elbow of my manifest density... There you have it. A citizen that obviously feels strongly about Fat Dog Mendoza's guilt. Ah, well, yes. I'm sure that whatever this old man said, it was confirming Fat Dog's guilt. The Great Flood is coming! Really? Ugh. Not right now, you crazy old woman! This is serious! You can't listen to these loonies! They don't know Fat Dog! If you knew Fat Dog like I know Fat Dog! You're biased! Okay, but I know somebody else who can vouch for Fat Dog's character. So, Ms. Piranha May Hoover, can you, in your own words, describe Fat Dog Mendoza? Sure thing, little costume buddy. Fat Dog is a great guy. One time, I invited him over for a tea party. More tea, Fat Dog. Yes, please. One lump or two? Oh, please. And if that weren't enough, he went on to eat the table, the chairs, and if it wasn't nailed down, he took it and ate it! 
Even my dolls! The Savage. Uh, uh, okay, okay, Peronimi. Uh, could you describe Fat Dog in somebody else's words? Sure thing. Um, <clears throat> Onion Boy once told me about how he saw Fat Dog eat a down Venezuelan airliner, and it wasn't even his flight! Cool, huh? Oh. Did I say something wrong? There you have it. More proof of that dastardly Fat Dog's guilt. Man, that was close. What I'm telling you! You need to hear it straight from the donkey's mouth. Come on, I'll get Fat Dog to turn himself in. Fat Dog! Fat Dog, turn yourself in! <clears throat> Has my little costume buddy gone over to the other side? Fat Dog, come on, boy! Turn yourself in! Oh, no! My very own little costume buddy! Why have you forsaken me? Citizens of Neighborhood X, you have seen me on TV, therefore you can trust me when I tell you that Fat Dog has pillaged your houses and plundered your wives. And I say to you that he must be hunted down like a big, fat dog! Oh, yeah! Now go! Go bring Fat Dog Mendoza to justice! Boy, wherever I turn, they're there. Always after me. Always around every corner. I can't take it anymore. Nobody knows what it's like to be an outcast. To be a freak! <laughs> well, all right, maybe you know. Say, boy, does that machine actually work? Well, kind of. As long as your head's not an onion. Come on, let's fire this baby up. <laughs> It'd be nice if one of my inventions could help somebody. Headed, sir. Have you seen that criminal, Fat Dog Mendoza? Look, pal, I have half a mind. <sighs> it's the heat. Please go on. No, that's it. I have half a mind. But I do want the world to know that Fat Dog has saved tons of babies from burning Ferris wheels. Or was it merry-go-rounds? Anyway, Fat Dog is a terrific guy. A man that should be worshipped, not jailed. Free Fat Dog. Free Fat Dog. Look, pal, I'm a reporter. I'll decide who's guilty and who's innocent around here. Obviously a deranged man with a swelled head. We all know that Fat Dog is definitely guilty. Um, Mr. Reporter, we're tired and we want to go home now. Absolutely not. I can't get good crowd reactions without a crowd. That's just bad television, old man. You're gonna stay until we catch Fat Dog. Ooh. Unattended meat. <laughs> and there he is, the canine culprit. <laughs> Fat 
Dog, I arrest you in the name of the media. Stop it! Stop it! That's not that dog. <laughs> Come on, little costume buddy, cheer up. You shouldn't feel bad. Really? Why not? Look at the bright side. Fat Dog probably is guilty. Isn't that cool? He's eaten before, and he eats a lot. He's amazing. He probably stole the whole truck. What a criminal mastermind. You should be proud and happy and proud. Uh, thanks. What if he is guilty? He really could have stolen all that food. Oh, it's just too dark. Too dark altogether. No! No! See you later, little costume buddy. The Squad Patrol Handbook can help me. It has all the answers. Let's see. Gears, gerbils, gastrointestinal disorders. Oh, here it is. Guilt. If your friend's in trouble, make him pay you double. Oh, I don't know about that one. What would a budding superhero in training do? Always wear a clean cape? Yeah, but... <gasps> That's it! Seek out the truth! I just find Fat Dog myself and ask him if he's innocent. Fat Dog! Fat Dog, it's me, your little costume buddy! Dog, am I glad I found you? Why? So you can turn me in? No, but I do need to know. Did you take that truck full of food? I didn't do it, honest. There's no way that I'm guilty. Oh, fat dog, how could I ever suspect you? You're my friend, and friends have to stick together. But if you're innocent... Then somebody else is guilty, and they pinned it on me, the fat dog. Wicked! A bona fide mystery! Let's go solve it! Together. Several times now, you people have let this big, fat criminal slip through your wimpy grip! Yeah, well, oh, it's well, it doesn't matter. Well, yeah. yeah. Get it together, people! You're killing my ratings here! My viewers like a bloodthirsty crowd! I want to go back to the home! It's time for my nap! As an angry, murderous, mindless mob out for blood, you guys are pathetic! I'm out of here! You catch Fat Dog by yourself! <laughs> Turn that darn thing off! What am I paying you for? Turn it off! Lousy, unpredictable crowds! Hello? Mel's rent a mob? Yeah, I need a mob. What kind? Ignorant, angry, bloodthirsty, you know. Well, I don't care if they're peasants. Just send over what you've got. Now, you people are being paid, and paid well. So get out there and bring me the head of that dog. All right, Rectangle. You know something. Dog! I have nothing to say. Cut another one. Yeah, stop it! Stop it! Not another circle! A beautiful rectangle ruined! No! Then spill the beans. <sighs> Word on the street is that somebody ordered a big brown costume delivered over to Dead Maple Drive. I swear that's all I know! That's all I know! Tsk, tsk, tsk. Mom? Untie me. Mom? Okay, everybody, 15 minute break. Union roll. Okay, Fat Dog, we have 15 minutes to solve the mystery of the missing food truck before that angry mob is back on the clock. And after our sorry butts, 
Let's check out Dead Maple Drive. Anything? Nothing. And I'm Yucky Flavin' Key. What is it? What is it, boy? Hey, isn't that Cruddy's little dog? <sighs> Woof. She's not so little anymore. <laughs> Why, just yesterday, she was a svelte little thing. Oh, she's really let herself go. <laughs> what happened to her? I'm not sure, but I've got a hunch. Let's follow her. Look at that dog. The truck from the crime buried right here in Cruddy's backyard. <laughs> Precious, come on, girl. Come on, girl. You can do it. You don't think. I do think. I just want to swim in a crock chase or something. Shanks O'Malley here. Shanks, this is Fat Dog. You want a piece of me? Do ya? Well, meet me at 55 Dead Maple Drive in five minutes. I'll be waiting inside for you. Only minutes ago, my efforts paid off as a frightened, terrified, guilty Fat Dog called to turn himself in. Hey, Shanks! I got your guilt right here. Hey, boss, there's the food truck! We've got him now! Come on! Read it and weep, Shanks O'Malley. Fat Dog is fat and innocent. Because Cruddy McPherson is huge and fat. And he used this Fat Dog costume. You? Fat Dog? I... I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew it all along. Uh, Cruddy McPherson pulled the caper in a fat dog disguise. Care to confess on Nationwide TV as to why? Why'd you do it, McPherson? Yeah, why'd you do it, Cruddy? Because I was fed up and jealous of Fat Dog getting all the praise, getting all the loyal friends, getting all the women, getting all the food. Just because he's big and fat and louder than most people. But it's too late for Fat Dog. I'm the man now. I'm gonna be Fat Cruddy. Ha! Or Fat McPherson. Or Fat Cruddy McPherson. I haven't quite decided on the name yet. Now I'm gonna be a force with which to be reckoned. I'm gonna own this town. The whole heist was a double whammy. Send me to jail while Cruddy gets huge and fat and respectable. Stand back, world. Fat McPherson is coming at you. What do you think of that? Ha! Ha <laughs> And so, it only proves that I was right. I knew Fat Dog was innocent all along. And now, it is with great humility that I take the credit for saving Fat Dog's reputation. A close friend of mine and a beautiful human being. I have had it with that guy. Turn it off! Turn it off!
Okay, uh, I won't hurt you. Oh, that's it. Oh. <laughs> hey, cut it out. Hey, that tickles. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, trash. I'm late for school. Sorry, little fella, but I gotta go to school. <laughs> hmm. I can't just leave you out here in the open. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, all right. Say, little robot baby, you can come to school with me. Uh, well, um, mm, mm. What's more important? Let's go. Now open your text to page. <laughs> well, 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 little costume buddy. Late again. You know what that means. You'll need to be drawn and quartered after school. Oh, my, Esther, that seems a little harsh. Uh, he's only five minutes late. Let's see if he has a good excuse. Whoa. Uh, I do. I kind of. <laughs> oh, my! A little baby! <clears throat> Sprackensy Deutsch? Uh, Miss Polly, it's a robot. That thing had better not be in Neighborhood X illegally. Oh, no, ma'am. He was hiding in some bushes. Oh, he is so cute. What a swell pet, little costume, buddy. <clears throat> Well, I think it's stupid. D U M B. Stupid. <laughs> My hat! That's it! I'm gonna sue the metal heart of that little mechanical menace. Back off, Miss Pearson! Touch one nut on this robot baby's neck and you'll be wheeling yourself home in pieces! Hmm. <laughs> you don't scare me. No, sir, ma'am. Not one little bit. Ye big dumb boy. Huh. Look what he can do. <laughs> Here, boy, look at my homework. <laughs> hey, your robot baby just ate my homework. <laughs> Look and follow me home. C 
Can I keep it? Can I fat dog? Can I, can I please? Hang on a minute. You're busting my bladder here, kid. Ouch! Why, you little... <laughs> How cute. So, uh, that means I can keep him, right? I don't know, little costume buddy. A robot baby's a big responsibility. I've seen it a million times before. People get a baby robot when they're cute and small. But when they start to grow, they get flushed down the toilet until there are thousands of baby robots breeding in the sewers! Come on, fat dog. I won't flush him down the toilet. I'll take care of him. I'll, I'll change his oil. I'll grease his bearings. I'll buff his little plastic noggin. All right, all right, you can keep him. But look at his feet. That robot baby is going to be huge. Nah, he's so cute. You'll see. It'll be a piece of cake. Man, you really eat a lot of scrap. <laughs> How cute. Mm. Little costume buddy, your robot baby leaked oil on the carpet again. I'm on it. <laughs> My bike of lawfulness! Bad robot baby! Bad robot baby! Whoa, robot baby. I could never stay mad at you. Robot baby, too much TV is bad for your circuit. <laughs> no, sir. I don't believe the germs are capable of that, sir. <laughs> what robot, sir? Where? <laughs> you want that robot. You must have that robot. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. We're driving by and couldn't help but notice your giant robot. <laughs> Robots are so clean and user-friendly and germ-free, not like people at all. I, Old Man X, would like the robot. <laughs> As an interpreter and cleanly companion. Hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. I didn't catch that last bit. I must have misunderstood. <laughs> Oh, I see. An interpreter. Although I think that position is already filled by me. Oh, yes. This is great. He can train it while it's still young. Oh, joy of joys. Hand over the robot. No way. Huh? Old Man X always gets what he wants. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, back off or I'll sneeze. <gasps> You're bluffing. Let's give it to the broadside. Full spray ahead! At you! At you! At you! Yes, sir! Full retreat, sir! At you! At you! Oh, he'll be back! Old Man X will have what he wants! We've got to hide the robot baby. Great! That'll be like trying to hide a needle in a haystack. A big robotic needle with a plastic scalp. You got a better idea? No, but I know someone that can help us. He knows robots upside and down. He was even mauled by robots once, which is pretty cool. <laughs> All right. 
Come on, little fella. Let's try another of your Uncle Fat Dog's harebrained schemes. They went that way, sir. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, oh, sorry, sir. Go ahead. Oh, yes, sir. They can't escape now. This is a pretty shady part of town, Fat Dog. You sure about this? Absolutely. My friend's a big game robot hunter for the black market. <laughs> ah, don't sweat the big stuff. He's retired. Here he is. Come on. Hello, fat dog, old man. Hey, Skinny! I'd like you to meet my little costume buddy. Little costume buddy, Skinny Boyle Esquire. <laughs> Look, Skinny, you gotta help us. We've got this giant robot baby, and Old Man X is after it. Oh, and I dare say I can see why. That's a very rare endangered species of wild robot you got there. I've never seen one in the flesh before. They were hunted to near extinction by the Vikings, who believed that ground-up electrodes in their tea used to give them vim and vigor while out pillaging and uh, <laughs> what have you. What's the skinny on how to protect him, Skinny? I must say that the safest place for a wild robot is um, back in the wild. He's got a fighting chance there, the protection of the herd and all that. Of course, I know several zoos, or I could take him off of your hands, what? Fetch a good price on the black market, he would. Back off, Joe! Skinny. Whatever. You're not laying a finger on my robot baby. <laughs> Kids. We're leaving. <laughs> Crash, fat dog. Any ideas now? How about putting the cheese inside the pretzel like a little cheesy center? Mmm, cheese. No! How to save my robot baby? There comes a time in every robot baby's life that it has to be returned to the wild. Robots were never meant to live like this, cooped up in the cold, comfortless confines of a city or town. They're meant to be free. Built free to live and wander the open oil fields, to roam the vast mechanical plains. Built free, as free as the fuse blows, as free as the oil flows. Free. You see, it's where he belongs. Come on, it's time to set him free. Stop. 
luck. Look, go and get Skinny Boyle Esquire. He'll know what to do. I don't know, Fat Dog. Trust me. I'll stand a vigilant guard over your robot, baby. Now go! <laughs> what he's saying. Oh, this isn't going to work. I've got to save the old man from his folly. Oh, two have grown old without having grown wise. <laughs> Robot Baby, where are you? Robot Baby, please come back. Where, oh, where could he be? Like I care. Time to eat something. Psst. Hey, you! Little costume buddy and your fat dog. Come here. What? Did your fearful leader send you over here to cause trouble? I am warning you. I've eaten hams bigger than you. Hey, hey, take it easy there, big guy. I'm here to help. You want your robot baby? I want my job. I think we can work a deal. All right. But no funny stuff. You're going to need help. Big help. I've got just the thing. Robots are sensitive to vibrations. Watch. What do we do now? Now we ride. Hey, you robot baby stealing old man! Hand over the robot baby! Uh, he said all oh. interpret later! Let's get you out of sight before you blow your cover! See your house from up here. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. I may have germs and I may even smell at times, as you say, but I am not a fickle, house-stomping collection of wires and metal plates, which would be hard to prove, as you say. <laughs> Robot baby! Here, boy! Come here, boy! Robot baby! Robot baby! <laughs> Cut it out! 
out, boy. <laughs> Cut it out. Um, little costume, buddy. I'd hate to break up your reunion, but uh, we got company. It's time to set him free, little buddy. But, Fat Dog, he's afraid. Can't we just take him home? This is his home. This is where he belongs, running free with all the other wild robots. I don't want you to, but you gotta go now. It's gonna be okay. You belong out there, with them, built free to live free. Go on, go on, you've got to go. Go on, be free. superheroes back then were on that ill-fated Spanish galleon. But even with their fantastic powers, they couldn't save her. 
The Spanish galleon went down that night, never to be seen again, right at the mouth of Neighborhood X Harbor. And legend has it, there's an amazing treasure down there. The golden belt of honesty, the helmet of brains, the bow tie of belief. And the never-ending ham. Huh? What? Never-ending? It's all still waiting down there for two intrepid adventurers like us to dive down and get it. Uh, that ham thing, you said that just to wake me up, didn't you? I put a walkie-talkie in each helmet so we can talk to one another. Fat dog, do you read me? Over. Like a big, fat, overdue library book. Over. All right, then. Into the briny deep. Over. To snack with the fishes. Over. Look! That's it, all right. I can spot a Spanish galleon a mile away. I'm an expert. Over. Got a tail itch that's driving me crazy. Over. Fat dog, that water didn't just empty itself. Someone rigged this place up. Somebody else is here. Ooh, yeah, I smell something fishy. Not a fishy fishy, but a funny fishy. Not a haha funny fishy, but a not good funny fishy. Hmm. Here's the problem. It looks like someone's been eating fish for years and years. Oh, I can deal with that. Fat dog, these fish bones have teeth marks in them. But who could? He got up over the other side of the wall. Why don't you go outside and blow off some steam? Hello? Is there somebody there? Open up! Or we'll huff and we'll puff! Ah, just open the door already. It stinks in here! What do you want? How'd you get down here? Uh, we were just... <gasps> Hey, I recognize you from the superhero history books. You must be Steamed Man, one of the greatest heroes of a hundred years ago. Why, yes, I am. Come in, both of you. We've got visitors. Who are you? Tell the truth or face the torch of liberty. This is Fat Dog Mendoza, and I'm Little Costumed Buddy. You must be Lady Liberty. I am indeed. I am forever honest. And meet the balloonist. He has the power to float. Also, I can deflate a little. Oof. It stinks worse in here. Never mind him. We're both so pleased to meet you. You're three of the greatest do-gooders ever. Thank, Thank you. you. You guys are trapped down here. Let's get you to the surface and back to your lives of fighting crime. Well, you see, we've kind of given all that up. You... What? Why? Trying to save this Spanish galleon was the last straw. When you're a famous superhero, all anyone wants you to do is save this, save that. It's just too much trouble. We decided we were happy down here not saving anything. But... But that's terrible! Uh, uh, excuse me, all. I hear you have something called the never-ending ham? Oh, yeah. That was a tasty ham. For a long time, it seemed like it was going to be never-ending. But we cut the last slice about 1945. Really? Well, that about wraps it up, then. Let's go, kid. Hold it. Just hold it, everybody. I just can't believe what I'm hearing. You three are famous. You virtually started modern crime fighting as we know it. You, Steam Man, you invented the heroic pose, remember? You still got it. See that, fat dog? No, <laughs> no. And you, Lady Liberty, I'm the balloonist. I mean, come on. You are three of the greatest superheroes who ever lived. And you've just been sitting down here on your butts for a hundred years. There 
there's crime to be fought. Neighborhood X needs you! Perhaps he's right. Maybe we should go up and help people again. It has been a little claustrophobic down here the last 60 or so years. But how can we return to the surface? We need something that floats in water. Apples? Bits of bread? A duck? Where are we going to find a duck at this hour? <laughs> duck. Wait a minute. Why is everybody looking at me? That was fun. Let's go down and ride this balloon pony again. <laughs> oh, at last, someone has located and raised those antiquated heroes. Imagine the secrets of their power if I can only get my hands on them for government testing. <laughs> and I will, too, or my name isn't T. Reginald Watts the Third, secret government man. Some powers of magic! You want to see the garage door open again? Truly, you are the greatest magician of all time! Show us more! And now, with this magic wand, I will show you the greatest wonder of the century! The very salvation of mankind! <laughs> oh, this is the greatest magic of all! A puppet theater in a glowing magic box! What magic! Anything is possible! It changes everything! What on earth is going on in here? You are all supposed to be out fighting crime! No TV until you've done your crime fighting! Oh, drat! Oh! My, my, my! Where's my magic wand? You know about car thieves, right? Kind of like horse thieves? Yeah, horse thieves. They really get me steeped. Yeah, good. Well, there's still a problem. Those two horse thieves just absconded with that horse's carriage. Now's your chance. Fight this crime, people. What the? Halt, bandits! You face Lady Liberty, and now I've got something even more powerful than a torch. With this magic wand, I will change your channel from bad to good! <laughs> <laughs> So easy when Mr. Mendoza did it. Do not worry, Lady Liberty. I'll catch them with my astounding state-of-the-art steam-powered traction engine. Oh no! The astounding state-of-the-art steam-powered traction engine is out of water. Sir, can you spare me some water to fuel my astounding state-of-the-art steam-powered traction engine? That'll be two dollars. You're charging for water? Oh, I don't have any cash. Do you accept beaver pelts? Halt, disturbers of the social order. The air is my domain. I rule all above. You cannot escape the balloonist. Uh, sure we can. I can't watch. All right, I can watch. They don't know how to use their powers, but just wait until I get my hands on them. What are you doing? You didn't solve any crime. The thieves got away. We really, really like this puppet theater of the glowing magic box. We don't want to miss a single moment of its marvelous magic lantern-like entertainment. And every time one puppet show ends, there's another one just starting. 
We don't have time to fight crime. Uh, fat dog, I need to see you out in the hall. This is terrible. I thought I was going to do good by bringing them back. But all we're doing is rotting their minds with stupid TV. Hmm. Maybe we can use that to our advantage. Welcome to America's Mostly Criminals. Our first reenactment tonight is of the biggest bank heist in years. You guys watching? This is how it's done nowadays. If only someone had stopped this man before he got to the center. Let's go stop that evildoer! No, wait! You're missing the point! This was just an example. Oh, way to go, fat dog. Now they think television is reality. You mean, it isn't! <laughs> Okay, so in this crime reenactment, you need to act like you're cracking the safe, okay? Lights, camera, and action! I declare a halt to this vile thievery! Hey, what's going on? Sir, behold the light of liberty! Cut, cut, this was not in the script! Hey! Okay, sorry guys, but that's enough! Uh, you did great, but uh, we should really go now. Tomorrow, I promise, we'll go fight some real crime. Right now, it's time for me to watch some more puppet theater. This hole of the garden sure beats filling up my steam suit from a well. There's a black mechanical carriage coming our way in great haste. Uh, quickly, throw him in the van. And remember, this is all top secret. My name is a Charles Big Blipper McDougal. Uh, but you said earlier. Uh, never mind that. Get to work. <laughs> What's going on? Looks like we lost some antiquated superheroes. Whew, that's a relief. I hate it when someone else drinks out of my hose of the garden. Welcome to the secret government laboratory. You see this? This is my secret government badge. Whatever I do to you is perfectly legal because huh, I work for the government. And uh, what I'm going to do with you is find out the secrets of your powers at any cost. You, the power to float. You, the power to steam. You, the power of your torch. Yeah. This government laboratory is going to isolate the secret of your powers, even if it destroys you in the process. Matthews? Hey, how you folks doing today? Hello. Hello. Matthews here is the product of our most recent big triumph. After years of trial and error, we managed to give to an ordinary human being all the powers of a chimp. That's right. Allow me to demonstrate. <clears throat> Chimp power! <laughs> Look how easily he can leap about. He can eat ants of a stick. Well, and he does that too. It's very, very annoying. All right, knock it off, Matthews. That poor, poor man. And now, we'll start to work on you. <laughs> it may take days or decades, but we'll isolate your powers. Do not resist. It only makes it much, much worse. <laughs> that was a secret government minivan from the secret government laboratory over on Secret Street. Who knows what they'll do to them? We've got to rescue them, fat dog. <sighs> Well, if Lady Liberty had taken anything but the TV remote, I'd say, why bother? But I agree. We must get the TV remote back! Here's the stuff they brought with them. Most of it's been ruined by the seawater. The golden belt of honesty. Anyone who wears it has to be honest. Uh, I'm afraid that won't help us against the government. This must be the helmet of brains. That ought to help. Oh, suddenly I know how to invent the telephone. That's the bow tie of belief. Anyone wearing it can make anyone believe anything. 
but I can't believe it still works after all that time underwater. Believe it. I believe it. Hey, it does work. I'm smarter, funnier, and better looking than you. You're smarter, funnier, and better looking than me. Okay, great. Let's go get those guys. Uh, Matthews, uh, we're about to start our experiments. Don't let anyone in. Use your chimp power if necessary. Yes, sir. Every secret building in Neighborhood X is here on Secret Street. There's the Secret Civil Service Building. That's the Secret Santa Institute. This is it, the Secret Government Laboratory. Excellent progress. We've harnessed his steam power so we can have some good tunes while we experiment. <laughs> brighter. Brighter. Brighter! I hope you're happy. The light of liberty has been extinguished. Hey, uh, what are you keeping that little basket anyway? I'll never tell. <sighs> <sighs> I can't believe you kept that little guy in there. It's for ballast. <laughs> what do you know? It really is for ballast. <laughs> what is the guy doing over there? Uh oh! He sees <laughs> It's just giving me a great idea. That's it. Hey, chimp guy, look at this. Look at all the bugs. Ooh, big, tasty bugs in Fat Dog's hair. Pop him. Pop him. You're all the boss, and you don't take orders from anyone. Yes, we are all the boss, and we don't take orders from anyone. Steamed man, blow some steam! Lady Liberty, balloonist, this way! After them! I'm the boss. You go after them. No, no, you no, go. No, I told you to go. I'm the boss. No, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. No, I'm the boss. I don't have to take that from you. You're fired. You're fired. No, you're fired. I fired you. I fired you. I fired you. I fired you. Three times. I fired you. What are we gonna do? The secret government man will be here any minute. That's a great idea, Helmet of Brains. We're gonna send you back to your home in the Spanish Galleon, where you'll be safe. Follow me. Fat Dog, you hold him off outside with the bow tie of belief. Right on, this past you, buddy. This room is where we keep the escape pod. This leads directly to the harbor. Get in it, and I'll flush. I mean, send you on your way. This modern age is so exciting. Imagine, an escape pod in every house. Yes, I noticed one of these at the TV studio, but it was for women only. I'm eager to return to our peaceful little home. I volunteer to go first. You're a fine superhero, little costume buddy. You must keep up the good work. Oh, whoa. Thanks. Now get in the toilet. Can I keep this portable puppet theater I found in your garage? Sure, go right ahead. It was great to meet you and your friends, and you taught me an important lesson. And what would that be? If you want to be a superhero, never trust the government. Okay, here goes. I seem to be stuck. Do you mind giving me another flush? Not at all. Don't believe what that dog tells you. Stop this right now. I'm in charge here. Or my name isn't Haversham Ludy Fitzgerald. But, boss, that's the third different name you've used. Well, my real name is highly classified. I'm a secret government man. <laughs> Sometimes I like saying things like, or my name isn't so-and-so, so I just make it up. Alrighty, then. <laughs> 
Take him away. All righty then. Take him away. Bad dog, you've saved the day with your bow tie of belief. What did you tell them? I just told them that he was a big jerk. They believed me. But I didn't even need the bow tie for that one. Now it's time you made me the biggest, best dinner of my life. Yes, fat dog. And scrape my paws. Yes, fat dog. And help me clean that stuff out from between my toes. What? That's too much even for the bow tie of belief. <laughs> well, you can't blame a guy for trying. Fish, little pond. I can't complain. Got that one. And that one. Whoa. Well, gotta go now. Yeah, I'll catch you later. Got that one, got that one. Got that one. And that one. Hey, fat dog. Catch anything? Nah. Maybe you just need a little patience. No, what I need are worms. What are you up to, little costume buddy? I'm trying to figure out what Squad Patrol Merit Badge I haven't got yet. I want to get them all. Because I'm going to reach the next level of my training. And the next, and the next. And finally, one day, I'm going to reach my goal of being able to hang with the Squad Patrol. The Squad Patrol. What a bunch of losers. They spend more time at the snack bar than they do fighting crime. Hey, good work here, Clops. Feed the machine, Hamper Man. Darn. Give me 
me a hand here, Handler Man. Looks like we got a real emergency. Jackpot, baby! This is my towel of merit, where all the badges go. Let's see. I've already gotten the snack badge, and the non-stop 10-day TV marathon badge, and the elder's special napping badge, and I've got my buy all the squad patrol action figures badge. So what's missing? My sales merit badge. Can't you just buy one of those? Uh, it's called a merit badge, fat dog. This is serious. It's right here in the Squad Patrol handbook. Sid Sharks, the super salesman, says, be a hero, move product. Uh, yeah, I know Sid Sharks. He sold me a dog once. It was a broken Rottweiler. Of course, I didn't find out it was broken until I got it home. Uh, but what's a guy like me need a dog for anyhow? Look, here's the super salesman using his briefcase of commerce to fight evil. See? Isn't he the greatest? So what are you supposed to sell? I don't know. Well, you could always sell these merit badges. Fat dog! Sorry, kid. Wait, wait, here it is. It says, pick up your official squad patrol sales items. Warehouse 11, down at the pier. Well, let's go get the goods. Deliveries around the back, kid. And we don't take dog no more. What? Excuse me, my good sir. I mean, ma'am. But my little costume buddy here came for the squad patrol sales items. Does that ring a bell? Hang on a second. Here, I've had this stuff in here for years. Good luck. Oh, and if you can't unload it, dump it in the river. Of course, I ain't taking it back. Oh, this is great, fat dog. Let's see all the stuff we gotta sell. Check it out. Crime cookies, the official snack food of the squad patrol. Cookies? Mmm. Ah. <laughs> Crime cookies, indeed they are crime. Call the cops! What else you got, kid? There's this birdhouse. That probably won't taste much better, but give it here. Fat dog! Sorry, kid. I'll never get that sales merit badge now. Hey, kid, keep your chin up. You're hanging with the fat dog. Have I ever let you down? Well... There was the time you told me that it would be fun to swim naked in the nuclear cooling towers. All of my hair fell out, fat dog! Yeah, well, that was a pretty bad idea. <laughs> yeah, and then there was the time that you told me to swim in there again. Yeah, but look at the bright side. You were your own reading lamp. And besides, that's all recent history now. I'll help you get that sales merit badge by teaching you to sell. Sell, sell! You've got to spit at the people right in the eye and then make them pay for it. It's a great big overpopulated world out there just waiting to be sold something. Learn from the master, kid. Look good, sir. It's new and improved ice. It's great. It makes drinks really cold. Try it. You'll like it. Mm. See? It's that easy. But I've saturated the market here. Let's try something even easier. Water! Get your water here! <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but can I interest you in a nice cold glass of water? <laughs> The art of the sale, rule number 47, kid. Know your customer. It's time to sink or drown. If I can't get you to sell cars, then I'm hanging up my shorts. Oh. 
Well, fat dog, you old son of a gun. I knew you'd be back. We're in business again. Now, now, Manny, things are a little different this time. I'm here to help the kid learn how to sell. Do you still have the stuff? I kept it safe all these years, although I never dared to hope. <laughs> I kept it, fat dog. I, I kept it just the way you left it. <gasps> no, fat dog! No! No! You sold cars, fat dog? <sighs> I've done a lot of things I'm not proud of, and yes, selling cars was one of them. You're the greatest! Well, you certainly are in good hands with Fat Dog Mendoza. <laughs> Best used car salesman I ever had the honor to work with. Good luck, kid! Let's begin with the art of the sale. Lay it on me, Fat Dog. What's important is not how you present the car. What's really behind the art of the sale is you, yourself, and you. Here. I've got a little something for you. A little help, though? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh, sandwich? No, no, throw that back. That's for later. A little further up and to the right. A tie? This is more than just a regular tie. The extra loud colors attract customers. The stripes inspire confidence. And as if that wasn't enough, <laughs> it's a clip-on. Okay. You look good, the car looks good. It's that simple. Yeah. But more importantly, in the art of the sale, you need to find the customer's weakness and exploit it. Most people are just walking weaknesses. Ah, and here's one now. How are you today? Well, fine. You know, that car really matches the color of your eyes. It, it, it does? Sure, and it makes you look years younger, and it makes your hair look fuller and dandruff-free. Wow, really? I think you better take it. It's so... you. You're right. I will take it. At last, I'm dandruff-free. Now you try it. Hey, drama girl. Do you need a car to get to your auditions or your restaurant job or something? <gasps> Nobody understands me! You certainly don't! I will buy a car from you if it was a last car on earth! <laughs> Sorry, forgot to tell you. Out of the sale rule number 403. Stay away from her. Oh, man. I'm a complete failure. Don't feel so glum, chum. You're not alone. There's a lot of complete failures out there. You just need to find your own special sales pitch. That's the art of the sale. You're an honest-looking kid with an honest-looking face, at least the parts we can see. You've got an honest chin and eyebrows. Use your eyebrows. Trust your eyebrows, kid. Excuse me, miss, but you look like you need to buy that car. I do. Sure you do. Trust your eyebrows, kid. Uh, would I lie to you? No, I guess you wouldn't. Don't stop now, you're on a roll. That car is a beauty. Would I lie to you? Would I lie to you? Great! 
great! I have the power of sales! I'm sure to get that sales merit badge now. I can sell anything. I've created a monster. I have the selling fever, and nothing can stop me! Except for the fact that there's nothing left to sell. I need to sell. So, sell! I need a sale, fat dog. I need one. You can sell me. Go ahead. Try and market me. I've almost got a built-in slogan. After all, I am the finest all beef product on the market. <laughs> oh, fat dog. I could never sell you. Hey, you selling them? Sure. I'll give you five. I'll give you ten. Wicked. Do I hear 15? Give me 15. How about from the guy with the bug eyes? Thank you, sir. 20, 20. Give me 20. Thank you. 25, 25. Do you hear 25? The lady with the bad hair. Hubba, hubba. Do I hear 100? Give me a clean 100 here, folks. Yes, you in the back with the big ears. Do I hear 105? Sold! To Cruddy McPherson for the contents of his pockets. What is this? Some kind of a trick? No trick. It's a deal, fair and square. Close enough. Ha! Little costume baldy. I've got fat dog now. You lose. You. You loser. What have I done? I was so caught up in the selling frenzy that I sold fat dog. What am I gonna do now? Oh man. Uh, Gruddy, I know you're kind of a big jerk and everything, but I was wondering, could you be nice and give me Fat Dog back? Certainly, on one condition, you get down on your knees and beg for him back. I want everyone to see you for the little costume beggar you really are. Ha! 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 Oh, forget it. I'll figure out another way. I'll buy him back. Except that I just spent all of my money on the squad patrol hotline. Oh, don't worry. I'll think of something. A plan of such cunning and stealth and smarts that, well, that you'll never see it coming. <laughs> Come on, fat dog. The coast is clear. Let's run for it. Uh... Look, it's a legal thing, kid. If I come with you, there'd be all sorts of trouble. Oh, but come on. You could just run away right now. <sighs> uh, no can do. I just wouldn't feel right doing it. Sorry. So, where were we, precious? Oh, I was telling you how I crossed Borneo pulling that sled full of medical supplies in a freak tropical snowstorm. Although now, they call Borneo Kalimantan. <laughs> uh, life just isn't the same without Fat Dog around. I can't go on. There's nobody to give me bad advice, or lead me down the garden path, or give me bad advice while leading me down the garden path. Oh man, this bites big air. That dog's probably suffering horribly right now. And I said, I don't know what it is, but it's eating my popcorn. <laughs> yeah, but hey, I'm tired of talking about me. Why don't you talk about me for a while? I don't care if it hurts. I'm gonna go back there and beg for Fat Dog's release, even if it kills me. Stop! Try not to speak. I don't even understand what you're saying. Psst, buddy, over here, kid. I got an idea. Maybe you can sell this thing and get enough money to get me out of here. But uh, are you sure it's the right thing to do? <laughs> These are desperate times. Please, kid. Please. All right, fat dog. I'll see what I can do. Uh, excuse me, but uh, this little pink dog really matches the rosy color of your cheeks. Would you like to buy a pink dog? 
pink is in this year, it makes a great blood scrubber. Hey, would I lie to you? <laughs> Nobody's buying. It's all gone sour. My powers of sales are all gone. I'll never get that merit badge, but I can still save my friend. Look, I know it's not right trying to sell you and all, but I promise that it'll all work out in the end, okay? <laughs> Whatever. Let's see. Fat Dog said the art of the sale was to know your customer, know their weakness, and exploit it. Cruddy's ugly. No, no, he's a bully. Oh, no good. Wait a minute. What's precious to him? <gasps> precious! There's only one person dumb enough to want this dog. Cruddy McPherson. I just need to play hardball. Let's see. Haircuts, happy land, hopping up and down. Oh, here we are. Hardball. Okay, I got it. Hello, Precious. Huh, I didn't know you cared. Uh -uh. But I have got somebody here I think you will want to talk to. <laughs> Precious? Not so fast, McPherson. What have you done to her? Nothing yet. I want to trade Fat Dog for your precious. Meet me at the nuclear power plant and family picnic area in 20 minutes. No cops and no funny stuff. And come alone. I mean, except for Fat Dog. I mean, you can bring him. You two come alone. I mean, with each other. Oh, trash. the next ride on the roller coaster. Precious! Fat dog! <laughs> uh, precious! Send her over! Send over my precious! Send Fat Dog over first! No way! Let's exchange him at the same time! I've got a very bad feeling about this. Hang on, Fat Dog! I'll save you! That was a pretty tight spot. Hey, what's wrong? It's just that, well, when I couldn't sell Precious, I realized I'd never get my sales merit badge. It was all for nothing. Sorry. But I learned a really important lesson, one that'll stick with me for the rest of my life. Never take an attempt to sell another man's dog. Words to live by, my little costume buddy. Not so fast, young man. It's Sid Sharks, the super salesman. That's right. I'm here to personally deliver your sales merit badge. You see, you're wrong. I saw the whole exchange with you and the poodle. Playing hardball and cutthroat tactics is what life in sales is all about, son. I'm proud of you. Remember, sell, sell, sell!
Just concentrate now. Think like the ball. Get inside the ball's head and squirm around a little. Be the ball, Danny. Uh, I mean, uh, be the ball, little costume buddy. <laughs> Speak to me! Speak to me! What's up with you, fat dog? My tail! It's got a contusion! An abrasion! A hematoma! An ouchie! Oh, too bad! Please. The, league the league championship, championship is next week. week. The lucky, lucky winner will be the happy owner of this recreational vehicle. vehicle. The prize has been donated by our sponsor, sponsor the Munitions and Chocolate, Chocolate Factory. Thank, Thank you. you. That is all. This baby is gonna be mine. And with it, I can rule Neighborhood X like an iron boot! <laughs> Come, monkeys! Away! <laughs> oh, trash, fat dog. If we lose to evil Dr. Rectangle next week, there'll be nothing to stop him from taking over Neighborhood X. Fat dog. All right, so there's a problem. But right now, my tail hurts real bad. And if I don't get a ham soon, I'm not so sure I can make it. <sighs> oh, come on, big guy. Let's get you fixed up. We'll save the world later. Jacob's on party of four. Please go to lane 12. Thank you. That is all. Look, fat dog. Look at them all. Hector the Eliminator, Chavez, Stan the Hand, Tubbs, Loose Moose, Gooseburger, Carl Legs, Nose Bomb, Ten Pins, Nelly McBride. Ugh, tough looking characters. Who are they? Wives of the President? No. We're standing in the Bolomatics Diner of Legends. Ooh, wow. Oh, man. It's. it's Pee Wee. Pee Wee Chili Bottoms. If only he were alive. I'd bet he could help me beat that mean old Dr. Rectangle. He ain't dead, you know. Although I suspect he wishes he were, the poor man. Does he come in here a lot to bull? <laughs> no, he hasn't been in here for years. Not since the big accident. The big accident? It was a sad day in the history of this great sport we call bowling. Pee Wee Chili Bottoms is the only survivor of the Lane 13 tragedy. And now we can't even use Lane 13 again. It's haunted. Pee Wee Chili Bottoms is the best bowler that ever walked in these shoes. Uh, do you know where I can find Mr. Bottoms? Forget it, kid. I know these bowling types. Once they're out of the game, they're out for good. Thanks for the sandwich. <laughs> Psst, kid. You might be the one. The one that can save Chili. Bring him back to us, kid. If you got the guts, you'll find him out at the old Bottoms place. You know, <gasps> a little costume, buddy. <laughs> That lucky ham sandwich has only made my tail worse. I won't be able to bowl with you next week against Doc Rectangle. That's it! I've got it! I've got the sure-fired way to beat Dr. Rectangle and his bowling evilness. We'll work up a number six on him. <gasps> I'm not sure I'm familiar with that one. That's where we go get Pee Wee Chili Bottoms to bowl on our team as your stand-in. <laughs> 
maybe all he needs is one fat dog and his little costume buddy to pull him out of his slump. I mean, how bad could it be? I hate you! I hate you! Ah! Get out of my house! I don't even know why I married you in the first place! <laughs> Pardon me, but, uh, are you Mr. Pee-wee Chili Bottoms? Now there's a name I've not heard in a long, long time. Pee-wee? My friends call me Slappy. Slappy? Slappy? Now there's a name I've not heard in a long, long time. Uh, not Slappy, Pee-wee. Admiral P. Bottom Billy Bones, all ashore, boosh and all hands. In fact, you could do worse than to just call me Chili. Uh -huh. Many have tried. Uh, right. We'll just call you Chili. <laughs> Buddy, maybe we've got the wrong Chili Bottoms here. Please, call me Pee Wee. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, well, I came to ask you a huge favor, Mr. Pee-wee. I need you to help me bowl against the evil Dr. Rectangle. Bowl? Bowling? Yeah, the championship next week, down at the Bolomatic Lanes. Bolomatic Lanes. There's this sad old waitress named Thelma, and she... Thelma! Bolomatic Lane 13! No! No! It's happening again! Thelma! <laughs> baby! Get down! Take cover, man! It was just me, Stan, and Carl. We were coming in low. Too low! A clean, surgical strike. My buddies were counting on me. I was cocky, gonna use my famous spin, but I lost my concentration and put the wrong spin on the ball. That started the big accident. No! No! The pin! You didn't pull the pin! You know what's crazy? Accident. I'm so sorry. The pin, the pin. I've seen this a thousand times. Bowling flashbacks. The horrors of bowling can destroy a man's mind. Quick, get him his bowling ball. It might be our only chance to save him. Easy, easy now. What's going on here? Hey! My old ball! Pee-wee, what happened? What was the big accident? I don't really know. I must have gone unconscious. And when I came to, it was all over. I lost my two best friends. And it was my fault. Their memory haunts me to this day. And lane 13 as well, apparently. Don't be so insensitive. Where were we? Oh, right. You were asking me to help you bowl against some crazy Dr. Square Guy or something. The evil Dr. Rectangle. Well, I'm ready. With my ball back in my hand, I feel I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> This might be a little bit more difficult than we thought. Here's your problem. We've calculated your optimum bowling ballast. Woof! That belly is pathetically flat. Time to start eating. Ahem. <laughs> Hard, 
Pee Wee, that I've asked Fat Dog to prepare a huge feast for you. <laughs> Luckily, I'm prepared for just such an occasion. Holding out on me, little costume buddy. <laughs> These hams aren't meant for you, fat dog. These hams are gonna help save the world. Dig in. Pee-wee, <laughs> you're a big, fat, round-bellied slob. <laughs> Congratulations! And now, it's time for the most important step in your bowling training. We're going to restore your confidence! You're going to bowl against Dave, the bowling African dung beetle. Blech. Ooh, he's an old friend of mine. Otherwise, I'd never tolerate his constant bragging. He's a bowling nut! Something as ageless as man's internal struggle. A bowling duel, man versus bug, at ten paces. Thirty paces for Dave, ten paces for Pee Wee. This is the only way for you to get your confidence back in a hurry. By crushing a bug? That's the spirit! on the world. Man, he squashed you like a bug. Uh, sorry, pal. Say, Dave, how's it going? You don't say. A ringer? A secret bowling weapon, huh? Hmm. Well, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. I'll unleash my own secret weapon. A weapon so powerful that little costume buddy won't even know what hit him. No one will be left standing! <laughs> Gentlemen, you've brought me a long way. I never thought I'd set foot on this asphalt again. I'm ready to bowl, but I'm not quite ready to face lane 13, okay? Sure thing, Pee-wee. There are tons of lanes inside. We won't even go near lane 13. Attention, bowlers. All lanes are being used except for lane 13, which is haunted. Thank you. That is all. Come on, Pee-wee. You can do this. You have to live up to your name. The great Pee-wee Chili Bottoms. Little costume, buddy? Fat dog? Dr. Dr. Rectangle? It's gonna be a pleasure beating you today, and I can take home the grand prize, my very own recreational vehicle. Sniper, sniper! Ha! <laughs> so that's your ringer? That's your secret weapon? Ha! Allow me to show you a real secret weapon. That's your mother. Yeah, well, at least she's not cowering under those chairs like some frightened old has been. These boots pinch my feet. Do you hate your mother? Maybe. It depends upon how well you bowl today, mother. Back off, Jimmy. I can't breathe with you crowding me. It's too bad all the lanes are taken except for lane 13. It's haunted, you know. And if you don't bowl against me, you forfeit. And if you forfeit, you lose. I don't care. I'm gonna bowl lane 13 if it kills me. 
Hang on a minute, kid. Let me try something. This always worked before. All right, all right, I'm working. Pee-wee, pee-wee, chilly bottoms. Pee-wee, come here, pee-wee. Pee-wee, chilly bottoms, welcome to my psychic realm. Who the heck are you? Who I am is not important. I am Nelson, Nelson the Great. Wait, what's this blowing up my skirt? A message from the psychic super friends of the stars. What is it? What does it say? It says you must face your fears. You must face your past and your future. They are saying that you never finished your frame. You left one pin standing. Only you can free the haunting of lane 13. Boom. Bowl the lane and finish what you started. That's it. You want more, you pay more. That guy in the skirt is right. Ah! I started this kid all those years ago. Well, now... It's time for me to finish it. Quiet in the alley, please. Pee Wee Hexbreaker Bottoms will now try to confront the specter of doom that lurks in lane 13. Repeat, Mr. Pee Wee Bottoms now confronting the specter of doom in lane 13. Thank you, that is all. Stan. You were always the hands and legs of the outfit. I miss you guys. It's Dan the Hand Tubs. And Carl Legs Nussbaum. Is it really you guys? Please, forgive me, please! I am so sorry about what happened! Stand up, Pee Wee. We could never blame you. Bowling is a dangerous game! We were all adults, we knew what could happen! That's right. It could be you here instead of us. Those are just the breaks. We've been waiting all this time to tell you. Hey, no hard feelings, Pee Wee. And now that you've completed that frame, the game is finished! You've set us free! Thanks, guys. I love you guys. At this time, all is well on lane 13. Mendoza, party of three, you may bowl your game against Team Rectangle. Repeat, the curse is lifted. Thank you, that is all. Come on, Chili. We've still got our game to win. I can't do it. You need to do your famous spin. But, uh, concentrate this time. Now it's over. Sorry, kid. 
No way. It's not over until the fat dog sings. I gotta sing? No. You've gotta be the ball. I'll just ball with Fat Dog. It'll be easy. Come on, Fat Dog. Let's ball. Dog, I think I hear something. Target sighted. Open Bombay doors. The plane! The plane! Pilot the ham here. Pilot the ham here. Ham's away. It's raining ham, Fat Dog! <laughs> By ham delivery! Hallelujah! See you next week, boys! <sighs> Woof! Oh, your hard work is making me hungry, little costume buddy. What would you say to some breakfast? I'd say, quick, hide in my mouth. Come on, let's eat. How about some ham? Eggs and ham. <laughs> Hold on there. Remember what the doctor told you, fat dog. No snacking during meals. Yeah, yeah. Fat dog! It wasn't me, I swear! Look in my mouth! Do you see any ham? Well, uh, no. Just bits of an old carnival ride and a whole bunch of Christmas decorations. <gasps> hey! My fake vampire teeth! Cool.
Blah, blah. I want to drink your blah. Gobble, 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 gobble. You want to drink my gobble, gobble, gobble? What does that mean? Huh? It's coming from behind your big ball of hair. But I coughed that up years ago. <laughs> years of hard work wasted. <laughs> Well, whatever it is, it's in there. Ooh, just think, Fat Dog. There could be anything behind that door. Secrets revealed, the mystery of the universe, adventure and intrigue, maybe even, dare I hope, a crime. So, you're hoping there's a crime in there, are you, buddy? Well, open the door. Fat Dog, it's us, only older. Woof, you really let yourself go. Yeah, nice hairstyling you got going there. At least I kept some of my teeth. Oh, thank heck you've arrived. We've been stuck in this small room for the last 40 years, all because of some stupid curse. And this cheating bird just cleaned us out. <laughs> How could such a terrible thing happen? You just had better cards, I guess. No, no, the curse! The curse! It was a curse so frightful. It condemned us to spend the last 40 years trapped in this nightmarish parallel dimension. You mean our spare room? Spare room, parallel dimension, don't get technical on me. Who ever heard of anything so ridiculous as a curse sealing anyone in a garage? That's too dumb to be true. Be careful what you say, otherwise the curse may fall upon you. Whatever. Come on, little costume buddy. Breakfast is waiting. <laughs> Great! I've been stuck in here for the last 40 years with nothing to eat except this turkey and some sugar-free gum. <laughs> okay, okay, just some sugar-free gum. Sheesh, you so much as mention cooking and eating someone and suddenly you're the bad guy. You call that a ham? Why, back in my day when men were men, hams came with their own bucket of fat. <laughs> Wow, Fat Dog, just think about how much we can learn from our older selves. Imagine all the wisdom we can pass on to us. Oh, this is boring. Well, they're playing is reruns. Hey, if you've been cursed and sealed in a room for 40 years, it's new to you. Who's from my famous ham and eggs and ham? Who's from my slightly less famous Ham and Ham? Ah, nice and spicy. Ah, it seems 40 years trapped in a room hasn't taught me how to share. But at least I still look great. Don't worry, Fat Dog. I'll soon whip us up a couple of fruity toaster tarts. Shave. No, 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 don't thank me. I'm a superhero. It's my job. Hey, I was gonna eat that! 
We did. <laughs> Why, you? Ah, I could never stay mad at me. What? Never mind. I gotta get busy. Spending the last 40 years in a small room has been a bit of a setback, but uh, there's no way it's gonna stop me from becoming a superhero. I can't just sit around waiting for something to happen. I gotta make it happen. Hmm, let's see what's on TV. I can't believe it! What is it, boy? <laughs> What's he saying, little costume buddy? I'm not sure. Maybe something about a busload of kids trapped down a well. Oh, if only we could calm him down. <laughs> Thanks, older costume buddy. Nobody's ever given me tissues before. Don't mention it, onion boy. I'm a superhero. It's my job. Wow, little costume buddy, you really let yourself go. Never mind that, Onion Boy. What was all the crying about? Crying? Oh, yeah! Oh, come quick. Uh, Piranha May's in trouble. She was using her automatic hair braiding machine when it short-circuited. Now it's trying to French plate her into oblivion. Come on, fat dog! <laughs> It, Piranha Me. I'm a superhero. It's my job. Gee, little costume buddy, you really let yourself go. Holy! It's a cute look, little costume buddy, but I think I prefer you with your hair down. Thanks. Don't mention it, kid. I'm a superhero. It's my job. You know, fat dog, that older me is really cramping my style. Tell me about it. Not only are these older us is cursed, but there are curse upon us. Don't worry. I've got a plan. A plan of such sophistication and intricate brainy... intricaciness. Yeah? What is it? Ah! <gasps> Any sign of them? Nope. We lost them. <laughs> hey! Somebody better make a ham run! Look, little costume buddy, there's only room for one fat dog in this garage, and I say we go with the younger, more attractive model. Same here. How on earth am I supposed to make it as a superhero when the competition just doubled? Don't worry. I've come up with a plan B. We lure them into the small room, shut the door, and then <laughs> lose the key. That's your plan B? Well, the full plan involves soft pretzels, a lawnmower, and a roll of toilet paper, but that's the essence of it, yes. But what about the curse? You don't believe in that curse nonsense, do you? Well, it seems to hold water. Unless we break the curse, it'll happen to us. And your point is? We'd be trapped in that tiny room for the next 40 years! Oh. Hey! We were watching that! Look, it says here in the Squad Patrol Handbook that, like dandruff and stubborn stains, Curses are often caused by unsuccessfully completed tasks. The best way to lift a curse is to finish the task that caused the curse in the first place. <laughs> Good luck. 
Yeah, we left a lot of things unfinished. Anything particular spring to mind? Well, I didn't finish the all-you-can-eat brunch of the never-ending buffet. Brunch! Piece of cake. Hmm, several pieces of cake. <laughs> I'm hungry, especially since a fat dog, whom will remain nameless, has eaten all the ham. Come on, little costume buddy. Let's lift this curse. Don't fill up on the bread! We have an unidentified 37-year-old male who just OD'd on pasta. Amateur. Curse or blessing? Such a fine line. Ready, champ! <laughs> Take it away. such thing as a free brunch. I've been thinking, whatever happened to that Mr. Omnipotent guy? You mean our arch nemesis? Yeah, we never did finish Mr. Omnipotent. No! I couldn't eat another bite! No, finish him. You know. Come on, let's go kick some arch nemesis butt. <laughs> Mr. Omnipotent? The evil and all-powerful Mr. Omnipotent? Yes? Are you Meals on Wheels? Uh, no, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, I'm real sorry about this, Mr. Omnipotent, but we've come to finish you. Finish me, finish me? Uh, yes, it's rather a long story. I see. Uh, please come in. Would you like some tea? I don't get many visitors. Sorry, we're rather pressed for time. We'll do it the old-fashioned way, if that's good with you. Okay, I'll just go get my teeth, I guess. Mr. Omnipotent's life of crime is finished. He didn't seem upset. Every bad guy wants to stop running eventually. Just think of all the extra time you'll have now. You can take up hobbies, make new friends. If only all old people were so easily entertained. What else you got unfinished? You know, we've talked it over, and we never did achieve peace in our time between the Eskimos and the Penguins. Yeah. 
Great! I'll just get my mittens. Helps it develop faster. <laughs> Photo, let's go. That's it. I give up. They'll just have to stay cursed. That's just a frostbite talking. We can't give up now, fat dog. Come on. If not for you, then do it for you. I mean, the other you. And if not for yous, then for me's. Do it for us's. You're trash, you know what I mean. Okay, one last task. What's it gonna be? Oh, probably something to do with that stupid squad patrol. That's it! I never did finish getting the final badge on my towel of merits. Wow! That's amazing! What's missing? Is it the Saving the World badge? Nope. Did that. Aw, oh, trash. Is it the Nuclear Fusion badge? The Cure for the Common Cold badge? Nope. Got those. It's... Uh, the Clean Laundry badge. Dirty laundry? How hard could that be? Ah, now I see why they saved this badge to last. Jeez, fat dog. How do you think your older self got his underpants so dirty in the first place? I've never even seen you or him wear underpants. Kid, some things in life should never be questioned. Just keep scrubbing. Underpants. Underpants, too many underpants. It's the last of them. Ooh. You know, the sight of all your dirty laundry fluttering in the breeze is making me sick. Me too. Curse or no curse, let's grab the turkey and go someplace much more underpantless. <gasps> well, we almost barfed several times, but we washed all your underpants. Hello? Anybody here? You don't. Think. They're not here. They've got a little costume, buddy. The curse is lifted. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Quick, grab the door. <laughs> it's what? The curse is upon us. Well, at least we're not trapped in here with that stupid turkey. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, have a seat, kid. You can't fight destiny. Not when we're cursed by our own stupidity. You said it. Deal the cards, old man. We've got a long wait. <laughs> <laughs> 